Hello, this is Steve Andriotis, a public affairs specialist with the USA Copyright Office. And we will now begin uh, the US Copyright Office's latest public modernization webinar. During the program, attendees may submit questions using the Q&A panel accessed by clicking the Q&A icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Uh, we will answer questions after the presentation is complete. However, we may not answer all of the submitted questions during the webinar. Furthermore, this session is being recorded. So if you choose to participate by submitting a question, any of your questions will be concluded in the recording as part of the record. And now I'd like to welcome the presenters for today. Uh, we will hear from George Taroni, Interim Head of the Public Information and Education Office. And he is joined today by Francis Cardin from the Copyright Office's Product Management Division. And with that, please take it away, George. Find yourself in copyright. That's an ongoing theme here at the US Copyright Office and it describes what we help people do. Whether someone is sparked by their imagination, exploring their inspiration, or discovering how to empower the, their creativity, people are drawn to getting that information from us. And we're here to make that connection. The Public Information Office, or PIO, is the first point of contact for members of the public to ask questions about copyright registration procedures, steps in the document recordation process, copyright office policies, and many general and very specific questions about copyright before they start to engage with the copyright registration process, after they've submitted a claim, and sometimes after their claim has been approved. Now that's a lot of interest from publishers, musicians, photographers, attorneys, bloggers, comic strip illustrators, and more. It's all a part of fulfilling our mission to promote creativity by educating diverse audiences about copyright matters, including copyright law and regulations and the practices of the US Copyright Office. It's our vision that the American people public be fully informed and educated about the benefits of copyright law and how it fosters creativity. We want to be seen as the authoritative voice on copyright matters. Now, PIO provides these services through a team of 22 highly trained individuals. They're experts in all areas of copyright law and policy and are well experienced in providing high quality customer service. As part of our broader modernization effort, the Copyright Office has a mandate to improve its services. If you've participated in our previous webinars, you'll know that we're actively working on improving the copyright registration experience. We've launched a pilot system for submitting copyright related documents. We're testing a new interface for searching our records. And there are many more fronts for modernization activities. Today, we're talking about improving the customer experience for those that interact with us by phone, email, or in person. We're starting with examining current gaps in our context center service delivery and technology and leveraging government-wide best practices for contact center services. So why are we doing this? Well, we want to improve the customer experience and operational efficiency, specifically across three key areas, people, process, and technology. So for the people side, we know that if we improve the experience for information specialists in the Copyright Office, we'll in turn improve experiences for everyone interacting with us. We hope to achieve a faster, more efficient service, decreased wait times, decreased return calls, decreased dropped calls, and providing a centralized place for service users to reach out and get unified answers. Focusing on the process, we are seeking to remove and reduce manual processes that involve staff manually clicking to track calls and emails 
as well as creating manual reports and other paper-based processes. We're looking to increase the ability to share information and knowledge. We are looking for better information availability that provides our specialists access to certain systems they need to provide answers. We hope to have one central point of contact for a consistent response. And we're looking to add data collecting processes. For technology, we, we'd like to have a centralized knowledge management system that will improve resolution speeds, uh, case tracking, more intuitive technology, such as AI-assisted service options, modern tools for knowledge management, additional communication channels for people to interact with us, better insight into trends, uh, frequently asked questions, and copyright service user history to allow for a proactive rather than reactive approach. So a contact center solution would provide significant benefits to the office by providing us the capability to respond to public inquiries with state-of-the-art technology. That will allow users the ability to self-serve. Uh, we'll be providing answers via AI technology and producing overall increased efficiency. If we look at the numbers, uh, this is a typical year. So 2019 and then previously, we get about 170,000 inquiries and they're almost evenly split, split, a little bit more by email, but almost evenly split between email and phone. Uh, a much smaller number of in-person and paper mail. And uh, we piloted an online chat system. So that was a 1% at that point. And uh, we had an average daily call volume of about 225. Uh, this was a look at uh, last year, really starting around March 2020, when we were in a full telework situation. Our numbers went up dramatically, and there was a shift from email to phone. Uh, the average daily call volume about 197. Uh, we had 3% chat that was during a pilot that we ran. And of course, much smaller in person. We started uh, having in-person appointments starting uh, July, a few months ago. And we still have the correspondence by paper mail. So that's a look at the numbers. And we um, expect that they'll increase as time goes on, as they always do. Uh, so. What are we doing with this information? I'm going to hand this over to Francis Carden, who's going to talk about our partnership with GSA. Take it away, Francis. Thank you so much, George. Uh, and thank you for that wonderful overview of PIO. Now that we all have an understanding of what PIO is and the range of inquir inquiries that they handle, let's focus a bit on where we want to go next. To start our journey, the office collaborated with the General Services Administration, GSE, IT Modernization Centers of Excellence. And just to keep things simple going forward, I'll be referring to them by their acronym, which is COEs. Their mission is to accelerate the modernization of IT infrastructure across government. The COEs leverages commercially available solutions and expertise from industry to deliver enterprise transformation initiatives in partnership with federal agencies. The office's engagement with the COEs involved identifying the as-is state, determining opportunities for improvement, providing training, working with management to identify efficiencies, identifying helpful technology, and developing a tailored recommendations to essentially complete the puzzle and take us to our future state, which is a transformed contact center. So these recommendations cover five core transformation objectives, optimizing customer experience, streamlining operations, leveraging emerging technology, improving workforce alignment, and enhancing the way that we use our data. For each objective, the GSA Centers of Excellence identified likely benefits and some potential opportunities, which we're going to take a closer look at going forward. First, optimizing the customer experience. What exactly does this mean? 
This core transformation objective is focused on making your experiences with the PIO Contact Center even better. This involves working to resolve inquiries on the first contact, providing faster resolution times, and creating a transaction history so that when you call us back or talk to several office representatives, they can have the complete story of your inquiry at hand. We're looking to deliver consistent, reliable information across all contact channels, whether you call us, email us, or send us a letter in the mail. Some of the opportunities that arose as we examined this focus area include utilizing surveys to check in with our customers to see how we are doing, and using a centralized customer relationship management tool to standardize the intake. Next, streamline operations. And as I get further into these focus areas, you're going to start noticing how they all interrelate and they complement one another. Streamlining operations involves leveraging common tools, such as using internal collaboration within the office to share knowledge and synchronize operational functions, standardizing processes so that we can identify and remove duplicative efforts to save employees and ultimately customers time, and using standardized measurements such as target call handling times to increase efficiency and effectiveness. Some of the related opportunities that were identified include addressing any siloed operations through change management efforts and continuing to focus on standardizing systems to reduce and eliminate challenges across different areas of the office. Next, emerging technologies. This focus area is exactly what it sounds like using cutting edge technology to reduce the current manual work, automating tasks where possible, and helping to direct the right inquiries to the right experts. We're also looking at some intelligent tools, such as chatbots and AI, to help increase customer satisfaction by providing instant, reliable, and consistent information. Combined together, this will help provide faster transactions, reduce human errors, increase customer engagement, and save time for both the office staff and our users. All this ties in nicely with our next focus area, which is improve workforce alignment. In this area, we want to concentrate on using technology, tools, and processes to shift the right inquiries to the right experts. This helps get the question to the best person to help address it. The office could potentially leverage technology to automatically address certain types of inquiries, opening up more PIO experts to address the more complicated questions. This approach will help us gather better data which in turn can be used to generate data analytics that will help us see where the needs are and where the technology can help us meet those needs. And that takes me to the last focus area, data utilization. Insights from the contact center can provide the office with data analytics that will help us to determine program opportunities. Data gathered from the contact center can help us increase transparency, increase productivity, and enhance the overall operational activities of the office. Data analytics can help reduce the total number of contacts by pinpointing and helping to identify root causes, such as a process issue. Customer experience feedback data analysis will help us to generate customer-focused targets. And finally, as you can see, we're building a solution for you, the customer. We'd certainly love to hear from you, your experiences, your suggestions, and anything else that you'd like to share with us. And with that, I'll hand it back to Steve to begin the interactive portion of today's webinar. Thank you very much, Francis, and thank you very much, George, too, for both of your presentations. Uh, I think uh, there was a lot of good information there about what we plan. Um, before we start the Q&A portion of the program, we would like to conduct a short poll for all our, uh, all our attendees. So if you could um, please take a moment or two to let us know what future webinar, webinar topics uh, you may be interested in for, for us in the future. So please click all that apply. And after uh, you submit an answer, if you do have any questions uh, for our panelists about today's presentation, um, please go to your Q and A um, and um, and please uh, let us know. Um, so we will now begin the Q and A. Again, you can submit questions using the Q and A panel access it by clicking the Q&A icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen. As a reminder, we may not answer all the questions that are submitted, um, but we'll see what we can do. And joining us today for the Q&A is Megan Daly, 
Director of the General Services Administration Contact Center, Center of Excellence, to help us answer some of these questions. And actually, Megan, the first question is going to be for you. Uh, please, let us, could you let us know what's coming next? Sure, thanks, Steve. So right now we're looking at obtaining vendor support, you know, in all of these modernization efforts that we're talking about today. And right now we're working on gathering the requirements for that. Thank you very much. And um, the next question, this is for Megan and George. Uh, so what benefits have there been from the partnership between the Copyright Office and the GSA? Yeah, thanks for that question. Uh, GSA has been a great partner in this effort because uh, GSA has a lot of expertise in this area and they've helped us identify uh, our current as is situation where we are now and given us um, good information on what we need to do next. So it, it's been a really uh, fantastic partnership. And this is Megan. I would just echo that as well. Um, Copyright's been such a great partner for us and um, has been gracious with their time. And, um, you know, as we did our assessment and, and as we're moving now forward with the recommendations. So great partnership for sure. Um, so uh, this question is for George. If we do start using chat box, will there be a way to bypass them and, and speak to a person? Um, some companies, company customer service bots are, uh, this one person said they're, they're not that great. And even if they don't understand what you want, you can't get a person. Yeah, thank you for that question. As I mentioned, uh, our staff have a lot of expertise in copyright law and procedures and, and policies. And uh, we want to uh, make sure that they're always available to everyone to ask those questions. Um, we're hoping that AI technology, chatbots, or whatever they may be, uh, would only be used in uh, situations where people have a kind of a self-service question, you know, where is my claim or um, something that's that's easily answered with a with an answer that's already on our website, for example, then um, whatever automated technology would, would be used to guide them to the question. But we'd always want to have our staff with the expertise that we have available to answer people's um, more complex and um, perhaps difficult questions, but we'll be there for you. Don't worry. Um, here is another one. Um, uh, this one may be also for you, George. Um, what are the areas that have been identified with the registration process that the PIO, frequent, that PIO frequently fields? Uh, could this be uh, with applications or problems with correcting data entry? You get a wide variety of questions from people. Some people ask uh, how to register their, their music that they wrote with their friends. Other people ask about how to use a particular type of application on uh, one of our forms. Other people are asking questions about uh, the status of their claims. Uh, so we get a real wide variety of questions and um, that's why we uh, want to continue being able to answer those um, as as our systems modernize. We'll have probably different types of questions, and uh, we'll be there to answer them too. Uh, Megan, this question may be uh, for you. Actually, one more question came in. Um, do you know will you use persistent identifiers to structure your data for analysis? Sure. Thanks, Steve. I would just say that you know, it's going to be to be determined on how the data is going to be structured. So you know, more to come on that um, as we move forward. Great. And it looks like that is the last question we have uh, for today. So um, with that, I will start wrapping up this webinar. Um, so thank you all very much for attending. Uh, this will conclude uh, today's session. Uh, when you do sign out of the session, we do encourage you to take part in a brief survey regarding your experience. Uh, we use this to improve our webinar program so that any feedback you give is greatly appreciated. Again, thank you for joining us today, and we hope to see you at future modernization webinars. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.